to the Morning punch Show with RB and J live and direct for more cities and an Instagram model's bio. Get ready for some boxing talk on the clock. Let's face it, you're not working and somebody's got to pay for the Wi-Fi. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It is RB and J. This is the Morning punch and Show, the most unpredictable, honest, and authentic morning boxing talk show in the game Today is Monday, October 24th, 2016. Our special guest today on Hotline Bling is heavyweight boxer Brian Jennings. Jay, where has Brian Jennings been? Brian Jennings is over there dropping major keys for us and, and being a vegan and staying in shape. And But he's out there holding Philly down, so it's going to be good to talk with him this morning. Yeah, you know, I caught up with him a week or two ago in Philly. I'm like, hey, we got to get you on the show. We want to get caught up. Where you been? What are you doing? Why haven't you been fighting? So those are all the things we're going to try to get from him today and just get caught up to speed. Um, he's going to call in on the 20, so stay tuned. In about 20 minutes, he'll be calling in to chop it up with us. Our lines are open, 718-508-9852. Press 1 to speak your piece. Tell us why you mad. We're going to talk about Golovkin, Jacob, you know, pretty much falling apart, not happening. We're going to talk about BSG versus Vargas. The past couple weeks, actually the past month, Jay, in boxing has been so slow. But we have a lot to dish today, um, Mm -hmm. and so we'll get caught up on some things like that. Um, We're also going to play Know It or Blow It with our callers. We have two really good boxing trivia questions, and these trivia questions have to deal with boxing this year so if you've been watching if you're an avid follower if you've been really paying attention this is the time for you to play know it or blow it so make sure you call in press one we'll pick you up and you can win some free stuff from the ragingbabe.com store so anyway jay i didn't even properly introduce you my partner in crime jay from inglewood founder of badculture.net what's good Woo! It is storming and raining here in Los Angeles. I'm going to blame Bernard Hopkins because today is the press conference in Inglewood for his fight, his final fight this December is storming. It never thunders or lightnings here. Is that the proper way to say it? But anyway, I'm blaming B-Hop for bringing this weather to L.A. So that's what's good in Inglewood today. (laughs) Actually, I think they have a press conference for him out there in L.A. today. That press conference? That's right, going right down the street from me. So if you're in the Inglewood area and you outside the forum trying to get an autograph from B-Hop, you might not get one, but you can give me a high five because I like that. <laughs> All right, let's punch in, Jay. We're going to recap this past weekend's fight. <clears throat> there weren't many of them. Actually, I didn't even get to see the one we're going to talk about. It wasn't televised. I didn't catch a stream. But we will go to Montreal, Canada, where David Lemieux dominated Christian Fabian Rio, he won by decision. I guess we could assume that Canelo Lemieux could be in the works, you know, sometime next year. This fight that Lemieux just fought was at a catch weight of 165. I did see some photos, Jay. I don't know if you saw any photos, but, man, he was really soft around the middle. He looked yeah. really out of shape. And after the fight, he, had, he even said that he was not satisfied with going the decision with Rio, who was supposed to be – you know, a, a very fine tune-up. Yes, I saw bits and pieces of the fight as well. I had a questionable stream that kept going in and out, so I didn't get to see it all. He was looking, so he's been eating good, he's been chilling, he's probably been hanging out with the ladies and getting haircuts and doing all those good things. If I was him, I'd be disappointed in that outing too because he should have just came out and bam, bam, and it would have been a wrap. So, Canelo Lemieux, I agree with you. Definitely the next fight. We know it won't be against Triple G, so hey, why not? Yeah. So that's really it. I mean, I, I, I'm sure that there was fights in the UK, and, you know, I really didn't pay attention. So we're going to get into some good stuff here. We're going to talk about, Jay, some fights that have been announced over the past week or two. Um, and there's a yes. bunch of them. So I think things are finally starting to ramp up. We're going to have a good November. We should have an awesome December. Some good stuff is already being rolled out for January. Around this time last year is when Showtime and PBC started announcing their winter and, you know, like early spring schedule. So I think we're going to start seeing more of that in the next week or two. Thank so God. One of the, yeah, I know. You know, it's been a drought. I mean, literally October was so pathetic. Really? For real? Goodness gracious. I, Looking like my backyard. I mean, I, <laughs> girl, your grace is all that. I literally 
uh, started watching more football. And I'll say that I've been enjoying it because I don't know much about the politics in football. In boxing, we know so much. We've talked to everybody. October's been dreadful. And football's actually been my favorite. So um, my Eagles won That's yesterday. So. You know, all good. <laughs> That's so. so. I mean, you got to fill in the time. I've been watching everything from WNBA to WWE to playing fantasy football so I feel you we got to occupy our time somehow I still haven't fully jumped on the MMA train but you know WWE though I'm with that I wish we could man that might be kind of fun for us to do some stuff we'll see I don't know back to the yeah yeah so one of the biggest fight cards that were announced this past week is Abnamadis versus Cuellar and also on that undercard will be Jamal Charlo versus Julian J. Rock Williams. That was finalized for December 10th in L.A., live on Showtime. This event will be the inaugural <laughs> event for Ring Star Sports, which is owned by Richard Schaefer. So Richard Schaefer mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. back. This is the first card he is going to promote, um, and it's finally, finally happening. Man, when I saw that, I felt like I should be like, at last. It was just it was so much. I can appreciate that it's in L.A. It's kind of funny to me. I, I see why it's in L.A., but we got a Philly guy fighting a Texas guy in my backyard. I mean, I'm with it. I'm selfish because I live here, but all right, that sounds cool. Why it's not Texas? Yeah. Okay, but all right, cool. <laughs> maybe they're maybe maybe they're mad at Leha Bata. Who knows? But Richard Schaefer gets him a big event to kick off the year. Yeah, well, Abnamadis was cleared. You know, he was having some issues with his eye, and New York wouldn't right. clear him. That fight was supposed to happen on the Thurman Porter card, but we're going to mm-hmm. get it. Charlo and J-Rock was supposed to happen every single month this year, I feel like. Every year. And that kept year. getting pushed back, and the, and the purses, and this and that. So, anyway, December 10th. Now, December 10th is going to be a really, really big boxing day because, also, Andy Ruiz versus Joseph Parker signed. <laughs> for December 10th in New Zealand. Mm. Andy Reese is a big Mexican heavyweight fighter signed with top rank. He has reunited with Abel Sanchez for this fight. Now, That's here's dope. the only sticking point is that Joseph Parker's promoter is facing a little resistance on the funding for this event, but Bob Arum is hoping that HBO <laughs> will pick it up and show that fight. So fingers crossed that that fight still happens. I hope, uh, if you know, top rank, if you're listening to the show this morning, if you need RB and I to go to New Zealand for this fight, we can do it. Because uh, December, it's summertime in New Zealand down there in the Southern Hemisphere. So if you need American coverage, we are more than happy to go down there and help you out. <laughs> Keep me stand up. Also on December 10th, because GGG and Jacob could not reach an agreement, which we will talk about that a little later, while well, HBO now has an open date on December 10th. And who do you think they want? on December 10th. They want one of their biggest stars, Terrence Crawford. So, you know, this December 10th is literally like six weeks away. You know, in this day in boxing, fighters have every excuse in the world why they need a longer training camp. I need more time. I got to lose the weight. Not Terrence Crawford. He's like, yo, we're about it. So we'll talk more about his options for December 10th later, but Mm -hmm. it looks like we'll also get Crawford December 10th. Chavez Jr. um, may also be fighting December 10th in Mexico. Versus mm. Brit- British, is that his name? I can't pronounce his last name. We're just going to call him British. Um, Chavez Jr. has linked up with Danford Promotions in Mexico. Mm, and that's a good fit. he's also now training in Mexico with his uncle, Rodufo. Oh, okay. So I guess Freddie Roach got kicked to the curb again. Again. We had to call him. When is Freddie you know, going to learn? Freddie ain't going to learn. Freddie is probably... Freddie just got to get them checks, man. He got to get them checks. And he, he, I wouldn't have even answered the phone. I would have had them, I would have got a pager just for them so they could text me a phone number. And if it's a phone number, I don't know. I'm not calling back. And as far as pulling in Unc to train you, mm-hmm. it makes me think of when you're a child and you got to call, I'm going to call your uncle when you're not acting right. You have to pull in Unc to train Chavez Jr. And Dominic Brit- British, that must be Spanish for scale. Because I, I just, what, what weight are they fighting at? I don't know. We'll wait for it to see. Uh, but, well, here's the thing. This guy British was supposed to fight Gilberto Ramirez on that Pacquiao pay-per-view card. Um, I'm sorry, on Crawford Postal. Remember, <clears throat> remember Ramirez had to pull out because of his hand injury. So 
this guy must be kind of legit, and I'm thinking he's got to be at 168, which makes this all the more bogus to me. You know, I don't know that's how crazy. they make that, if they're going to make this guy move up to 175. So anyway, that flight is going to happen in Mexico. So far, there's been margar- no television announced. <laughs> they got to put Margarito on that car, too. Why not? Oh, Lord. Oh, my God. The degenerates. That's what they can yeah. call the card. That's a good one. The how do you say that in Spanish? Degeneroso. I don't know. I don't there we go. That That's a big word. Hey. <laughs> so December 10th, big, big day. Okay, we got Mata's Cuellar, J-Rock Charlo, Parker Ruiz, Crawford's probably going to be on that card. Chavez is fighting in Mexico. Last going on December 10th. Let's move to December 16th. We will go yes. to Fantasy Springs on HBO Latino, Shabransky versus Sullivan Barrera. Hmm, that's a nice little car. That's a nice little car. Main events and Golden Boy coming together on that. That looks good. Shabrans- Shabransky, is that a Golden Boy? Yeah. Oh, no, but that's the uh, yeah, yeah, Ukrainian. Yeah, yeah. That, that's cool. So Barrera has been putting out press releases left and right, and they're not coming from main events. So I'm sure main events have oh. not been happy about these press releases. He's been sending out press releases. I can't get a fight. My promoter's not doing this. Blah, blah, blah. Ooh. Anyway, they were finally able, and I'm sure they were working on it. We know Jolene. She goes hard for her fighters. So, That's unfortunately, right. you know, it was probably hard to make him a fight, hard to get him back on TV. He did well mm-hmm. against Andre Ward. He didn't <clears throat> think it up, you know. Not at all. Andre Ward is just that much better. So, Barrera Shabransky, December 16th. The co-main event on this card, you heard it here first, okay, is the one to watch for. Eddie Gomez from Bronx, New York. Versus Rashidi Ellis. Ooh. Y'all may not think much about this fight because you don't know Rashidi Ellis from Massachusetts. He is a Golden Boy fighter. He is undefeated. He is a good fighter. That is going to be a banger. I think Golden Boy made this fight to say, okay, it is sink or swim for either one of you. So there is a lot on the line with this fight, and the winner will prevail. prevail and the loser will sink That's into a nice Bolivian. One. That's a man. I might have to. Fantasy Springs is deep. For those of you who are not from California, these fights in Fantasy Springs, like I live in Inglewood. It's not down the street. It's about three hours away down near Palm Springs. I might have to make the trek down here for that card. I haven't been to Fantasy Springs in quite a while just because it's far. But I might, I might have to roll down there. Maybe uh, I'll take the fam and we'll spend the night. Me and my mom can hit the slots and whatnot. I might have to go down there for that. Hmm. I, I, I think it's going to be a really good card. Anyway, that's on HBO Latino, people. Um, so then we go to <clears> December 17th in L.A., where we have Bernard Hopkins versus Joe Smith. Now, you know, let's toot our own horn here. We told you guys <laughs> about Bernard Hopkins versus Joe Smith weeks ago. It was formally announced this week, and then all the media writers started getting into a battle of whose D-I-C-K is bigger and who right. reported it first. And I had right. to have a little fun. I said, well, technically, it was reported first on the morning punch and show. Uh, but I understand we're not looked at as reporters. It's all good. But That's this right. will be Bernard Hopkins' final bout. I'm told that uh, the word on the curb, I'm told, is that Golden Boy and HBO is making Bernard promise that this is it. Like, they're like, okay, we are going to headline you in L.A. We are going to put you on HBO. We're going to do all this lead up like a 24-7, you know, to your final fight. But this has got to be it, Bernard. That's Apparently, it. Bernard agreed that wow. that is it. Now, the main event that day was supposed to be Salido Nora. Mm-hmm. And if you've been hiding under a rock, Salido had to pull out of that fight last week. He had suffered a back injury. I think he broke his spinal or something like spinal. that. <laughs> I broke my back. So, <laughs> spinal. So Salido is out. Got a little bit of word on the curb. What might flourish there? So stay tuned a little later. Frampton, Leo, Santa Cruz. The rematch is set January 28th in Las Vegas, MGM Grand. How nice that they got their rematch date just three months after that epic fight, Jay. How nice Man. must that feel? <clears throat> That is great. That means you, in, in, in those fighters' mind, they must be feeling really valued, really excited, and the money is probably looking real nice. So yeah. good for and them you, and good for us as and, fans. Yeah, I, I heard that Frampton, word on the curb, Frampton wanted it back in New York. 
Um, he has a huge following there, obviously. Leo Santa Cruz wanted it in L.A., obviously. And the neutral ground was Las Vegas. Plus, they get a bigger site fee with the casino and everything there. So, MGM Grand, I'll be honest with you. Um, well, actually, let me talk about the co-main first. The co-main event on that card is Mikey Garcia versus Tawan Vladikanin. That's pretty good. That's better than I would have been. From overseas. <laughs> right. better than me. So, for me, Jay, this almost makes it a travel-worthy card. I'm not saying that I'm going to book airline tickets and book a hotel, but I'm almost like, man, that card is kind of nice. Like, I wouldn't mind packing up my car, taking a little road trip to go that weekend. That is a right. really, really good card. That first France and Santa Cruz fight was all that. That's probably in the lead for fight of the year, right behind Chocolatito Quadra. Right, right. that good. Hmm. CRB, you say that, then if you pack up your card, that means I have to come too. And I'm not mad at that. (laughs) Well, we're going to talk about that, Jay. You might have to meet me in Phoenix. We road trip it out. That would be mad, mad fun and cheap. So, anyway, January 28th, that's a big, big, big card. Um, And I would suggest getting to Las Vegas if you can. Um, the other fight announcement that was semi-made is James DeGale went on his Twitter. He confirmed that he does have a date set with Badu Jack, said that it is later than he expected. Nothing has been confirmed formally, but apparently that fight is done. I tried to reach out to my sources, and everybody has been cricket. Nobody mm. can tell me the date. Nobody can give me a hint, which makes me think, they're blowing smoke up the gal's ass. Mm, poor guy. Poor guy. Yeah. Hang in there. Hang in there, buddy. <laughs> Hang in there. <laughs> uh, so we have a few minutes, literally, like three to four minutes before Bryant Jennings calls in. Do we have anybody willing to play Know It or Blow It? If you are listening and you want to play boxing trivia to win a free shirt from the RagingBabe.com store, please press 1. Um, the question, the trivia questions today have more to do with boxing this year. So we're not going to throw you for a loop and ask you something, you know, what happened in 1970 or 80. It's regarding boxing this year. Do we have anybody willing to play? We got somebody from the 224 that has pressed one and might be down for some Great. note or blow it. Let's pick up the 224. 224-558, you're on with the Morning Punch and Show at RB and J. Who is this and where are you calling from? It's your boy Carmelo. You can call me Melo and I'm calling from Chicago, Illinois. Good morning, lady. Melo from doing? Chicago. Congratulations, your cub. I know I was streaming through my uh my Twitter feed and I saw some some raging babe. And I'm like, man, I'll be seeing this girl on like different um YouTube interviews. She's pretty good. You know, I've never seen a female out here such a great, you know, uh, news reporter for boxing, and I was just, like, well, fascinated, so I click on, and then it says that she has a show that goes on in the morning, so I'm like, cool, I got the day off, I'm just around the house, straighten up a little bit, let me turn into this podcast, it sounds pretty good, ladies are great. Well, thank you so much, RB and J, we, we go together like, you know, PB and J. Listen, congratulations, <laughs> I don't know if you're a Chicago Cubs fan, or if you're a White yeah, Sox so fan, yeah. but... I'm I'm really a White Sox fan, but I'm a Chicago fan overall. I'm rooting for the Cubs, too. Yeah, well, that was nice. I'm rooting for them, too, even though I'm a Phillies fan. So, um, have you been enjoying the show so far? Yeah, I've been enjoying the show. You you ladies got a great show. I'm enjoying it. I'm going to continue to listen. All right, great. Well, we're going to play Know It or Blow It. So, what we do here is we give you 10 seconds on the clock, and we ask you, you know, a trivia question, and you have 10 seconds to answer it. So, This one, um, if you've been watching boxing this year, it shouldn't be all that hard for you. So here we go. Jay, we're going to get ready with the clicker. I need you to name me. Okay, name me three memorable fights that happened this year. Three of your most memorable fights. All right, Chocolate chocolate Tito, Quadrat, Porter, Thurman, and uh, Santa Cruz Francis. All right. Yes. Yeah, that's it. Good. Good job. All right. You want to listen. (laughs) Wow, he got it. Yeah, yeah. So what I need you to do is I need you to message me. um, Visit RagingBabe.com. 
pick any shirt you want. Make sure that we have your size in stock before you send me the message, and we will get that right out to you. Hey, thanks, lady. I like that game. I want to play again. (laughs) All right, we'll play another one a little later. We're going to put you back in the queue. Have a great Monday. Have a great Monday, ladies. All right. Cool. Hey, and all right. Go right for a new caller, Chicago stand up. Shoot. It looks like we don't have Brian Jennings in the queue yet. So why don't we take a little quick brief commercial break and we'll be hopefully he will be rocking with us when he gets back. All right. If you want the best, Box Stats beats the rest. Box Stats is the best boxing app for all you boxing enthusiasts and professional boxers. Perform a quick search and get all the info you want and need. Box Stats, available on the Apple App Store. Download it for free today. Box Stats, know your opponent. Are you looking for a website that has all the latest and upcoming boxing events plus unique and stylish boxing shirts and hoodies for men and women? Go check out RagingBabe.com. It's your one-stop shop for the most current boxing info and fresh boxing apparel for him and her. Shop online today at RagingBabe.com. Use the promo code RB20 at checkout for 20% off your entire purchase today. That's code RB20 or 20% off your entire purchase today. Only at RagingBabe.com. So join the movement and see why attitude and loyalty become passion and determination only at RagingBabe.com. And we are back with the Morning Punching Show. RB, I think we have our, our, our guest in the queue with us right now. Hotline bling. All right. Let's, yo, let's yo. get it. Hey, B.Y. Jennings, what's going on? Not much. Can you hear me? Everything good? Everything is good. All right. All right. Well, everything's good, man. Um, I just came from actually visiting visiting somebody that was sick. Um, they only mm-hmm. have about a week to go, um, and they were oh. they were a huge they were a huge Baba fan, and um, it was only right for me to go go have a seat with her for a couple hours and just and and just just sit there right next to her and just hold her hand while she lay while she just lay there. Oh, well, we're sorry to hear that. Yeah, okay. that's, that's 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 the other side of life that you know that we don't really take heed to all the time. So. Oh, that's yeah. dope. B.Y., you always out there with the people doing good acts and spreading the love and, and spreading the wisdom out there. It's good to hear that that's still you're still that same guy. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. I, I just was telling somebody earlier, I was like, man, you can give me, you can give me a billion dollars and you can take all my money away from me. I'm still going to be B.Y. Because my, my, B.Y. don't require money, you know? So it is you know, what it is. I, I'm always be myself. I have to chime in right here because one thing I know about you and I want to share this with everybody else is that, you know, in Philly we do these little club shows and Bye Bye Jennings always comes to the door and buys his tickets, you know, and to us that means so much because he knows where he came from. He doesn't forget it. He knows how hard those club shows are. He knows how hard those fighters fight and how hard the promoters work. And you'd be surprised that some fighters in Philly that are making a lot, a lot, a lot of money call us for free tickets all the time, but never bye bye, never. Right, right, right. So I, I always pay my way. You be giving back. Yeah, you give back. For sure. Love for that. Sure. In every way I can. You're a good dude, by. So let, let's start a little bit light before we jump into the business. Now, you know I like to follow you on social media. I like to low-key stalk your social media a little bit. Who is this girl in this leopard costume jujuing on the beat on your Instagram that we have to go find oh, for you and play the dating game? That's, that's, a, that's some girl called, a, called her Helen. She's a... Uh, you know, she, 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 she's actually African. You know, um, she's gorgeous, though. But, you know, I have... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I was, I was like, wow, you know, and you know, a lot, a lot of times people glorify, you know, a lot of the, you know, a lot of the fake stuff that's out here nowadays, and I would, mm-hmm. I would rather be, I would rather do the opposite and glorify something more, you know, more natural, you know, more, you know, more possible, you know, I, I don't really, I, I ain't really with all that, with all that crazy stuff. So you know, I, I, actually, I actually liked it the way I think it was humorous. I think she was real cute doing it, and I think that you know, me making that little, that little funny statement. Yo, yeah, it was good. You want you want a leopard? She I did want have a, a banging now. body. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she did. She did. It's all natural too. 
We gonna well, we gonna find it. Art, we gonna find it. The morning punch and show. We gonna do the dating game, and, and when you know you fight next, we gonna bring this girl to the fight. We gonna find her. So a little hey, more hey, social media. Happen. We're going to make it happen. So a little bit more social media stalking. You know, we're anxious to see you get back in the ring. And I know you play a lot of jigga on your timeline when you're rolling out in your whip. What's what's going on? Mm-hmm. Are, are, are we are we chatting a little bit with Rock Nation a little bit? What's going on on the home front? Uh, well, you know, well, you know, Hope, Hope is Hope is my man. Um, you know, ever, ever since ever since we we've, we've been we've been brought together, uh, you know, it was a situation where you know, you know where, where my character was was at hand, and uh, you know I played my part. I did what I did. I did what I I did what BY would do, and uh, and it actually it actually favored him. You know, in a great way. Um, so you know, it's it's you know, I mean, I haven't talked to him since. It probably was like one more other time after that, and that was just because I seen him, you know, in, in, in public or whatever. Um, but you know, other than that, it's just it's just his music and what it, what his music has done to. Me. Done for me and done for the hood. You know, he's the voice of the hood. You know, and it, and it's it's just it's music. Music is very stimulating to me, and Jay Z's music is 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 even more stimulating. So you know, um, so so the relationship between my music and just him, you know, it's it's it's, it's pretty separate. But you know, uh, I just do what I do just because I'm a I'm a whole fan anyway. That's right. Likewise. Well, let's jump back into the business at hand. Let's talk a little boxing. I read a story this morning before when I knew you were joining us that you were waiting to see something that was going to happen with the WBA to see if you were a potential opponent or replacement po- opponent for Anthony Joshua. Is there any update that you can give us on what's happening with that or something else that um, might be for you? Um, um, with, with, there's no real updates, uh, but, you know, uh, I've, been, I've been following closely, um, you know, because sometimes, sometimes the word might get to Twitter before it actually get to me, uh, because what I do is I, I let I let I let uh I let Jay do a lot of negotiating or whatever and um if it gets to a point to where they were seriously entertained, then of course he would bring it to me. Other than that, you know, Jay be like, ah, they wasn't really talking nothing so he but he'll still call me he'll still call me and keep me keep me very informed with, with, with every step of the way. But uh I'm pretty much just waiting you know, just, just waiting on, on I guess the elimination process, you know, so so they pretty much say, oh, it's either either me or uh, Eric Molina or uh, or David Price. Now, mind you, I don't even I don't I don't I don't even think that's the comparison even between the three. Um, and then you have people that you know I read my Twitter, you know I'm, I'm being added I've been I've been added in a few mentions, you know, the ways that would say, oh, a guy that comes from over two back to back losses, blah blah blah. I'm just like. First of all, man, we dealing we dealing with a with a real retarded world, and uh, <laughs> and I, 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 I just I just don't people I I don't think people respect 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 a lot of things. They don't respect a lot of things. So you know, a lot of people are just plain old stupid to me. Um, you know, stupid stupid is just stupid is just a word that I'm gonna use for lack of a better term. But I'm waiting I'm waiting on the word as well. Um, of course, I didn't have a fight in between, which I would have liked to have. Mm-hmm. But you know, this 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 how this how they do me, and uh, you know, I'm I'm gonna show up. I show up every single time. Talking about how they do you, so you you said that you're waiting. Waiting means that you have to be patient, but it has to be frustrating right. because you haven't fought since you know 2015. Why have you right. been out this long? I mean, has there been other fights in the work? Is it a promotional issue? Why have you um, fought? Um, I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't, I don't know why I haven't fought. Uh, and you know me, I, I keep everything politically correct. And um, and you know, I don't, I don't, I don't do the, I don't do the bad mouth. And so I'm not mm-hmm. gonna, I'm not gonna point a finger. Um, I guess, I guess anybody that has any knowledge of how boxing goes, um, then, then they can actually, you know, start to, you know, have their own opinions on my situation. But let's just say, let's just say this one. Uh, Bby is always ready. Bby has always mm-hmm. been ready. BY has BY has a confidence like none other. BY just started boxing in two thousand and nine. I was twenty four years old. I'm a grown man. So therefore when I fall when I fall victim to certain things, there's no such thing as, oh, build my confidence back up. I'm from North Philly. Like I, I was born with confidence. So there's nothing that somebody could take away from me because that's in better than me. So uh so 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 that's one thing that that's one reason why that, that somebody can actually, you know, not classify my absence as. 
you know, oh, he has to build it, he had to do that, you know, blah, blah, blah. Nah, I'm I'm good. So mm-hmm. I really don't know why. I really don't know why I've, I've been absent. Um, but let's just say I've, I have been ready. I have been offered a few times. It was very premature and it was very disrespectful. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, th- those those are just some things that I didn't even entertain. As it's like we're mm-hmm. not entertaining that. Uh, because it's 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 not it's not in our guidelines and the time frame is just not it's, it's not respectable. So I have to ask you, <clears throat> this past summer Deontay Wilder he was looking for a dance partner and they ended up with Chris Ariola and I felt like that should have been you. You know what I'm saying? I was like, why wouldn't that be by? You know what I mean? So were you ever in the running for that fight? Because to me that made the most sense. You guys have a little animosity. It would have been a good fight. You know, it would have been way more better than the Ariola fight. Were you ever in contention for that fight? No, I was never in contention for that fight. And this is one thing that I, mm-hmm. that I realized, right? You say, you say, okay, if somebody has, if somebody has a title fight, and not even, not even signal, not even, um, not even, um, pointing out Deontay, but if somebody has a title fight, right? And here it is, they have an open opponent, and they have to choose from the top ten opponents. They're not going to choose mm-hmm. me. They're, they're they're not. They're just going to skip right over me. Somebody will only fight me if they have to. If right. they have to, that's the only way I'm going to get a a fight from from a top top guy. If is that's if they have to. So if the so if one of the sanctioning bodies order order or, or order the fight between a number or whatever and a, you know two different numbers and and rankings, then that's the only way it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. The only way it's gonna happen, I can't see nobody picking and say, "Oh yeah, I want that fight." Because guess what? I'm gonna I'm post on my Instagram like, "Yeah, I'm still in shape. You see, the, everything is still here. My mind is good." But so they still, it's, I still pose a threat. And I bet, and I bet, you know, God forbid, you know, later on down the line, somebody say, "Okay, now we're trying." And it's just like, "All right, well, dog, you know, I'm preserved. I'm vegan. You know what I'm saying? So don't even think this shit is sweet." So they mm-hmm. probably, just, they probably just write me off forever. For real, for real, because I'm always come correct, and only a real person, only a real opponent, or only a real athlete would actually take the challenge and challenge BYW. Would you be willing to, let's say, just to kind of get back in there, to take some type of cut back, or like, you know, are you, do you have to be on HBO? Do you have to make a certain amount of money? Because right now, would you take a tune-up? Like, would you be like, yo, man, I'm just trying to get back in the ring. Let me get my feet wet. Well, yeah, well, yeah, I, I would definitely take a tune-up, but guess what? The top guys are fucking tune-ups, and I don't know if oh. we were able to curse or whatever. Or whatever yes, you are, the top, yes. The, okay. the top guys are tune-ups, or so-called top guys. Listen, the fight with me and Louis Sotis, right? Let, yeah. let, let, let me just say, and a, and a lot of people really, a lot of people discredit him, but my whole thing is, okay, how come he don't have a world title belt? How come he hasn't fought for, for how, how come he hasn't had a title belt yet? He beat me, so it's just like okay, mm-hmm. that has that has something to say about the game. A person that's that's quote unquote so skilled, and in my opinion, is so skilled, but quote unquote so skilled to the so called you know boxing aficionado or whatever you say that shit. Um, but he hasn't even he hasn't even he hasn't even gotten to a point to where it's like okay, his hard work has paid off. It's just like damn, he beat me and. Next thing That's you know, there's nothing behind it. It's like, like, damn, hold up. Even, even me was just like, all right, I was on the ground. I have, I've got stopped. I got stopped by Luis Ortiz. He deserves everything that he, he deserves everything. He deserves yep. an opportunity of it for it all. But he hasn't been presented with it yet. What the fuck is wrong with this game? Mm-hmm. Now they glorifying something else and somebody else saying, oh, they're the next blah blah blah. Come on, dog. We we passed potential, and we passed potential. Right. We talking about people that actually proved it. He's one of right. the people that like me, regardless of regardless of my excuses for actually being you know falling short in the fight. But he's he's proven it, and he hasn't got it. So how can I come? How can I come with a clear you know you know you know with a, with a clear explanation on why why I'm absent or why or why haven't I been presented certain things? It's like look at him; he hasn't even presented certain things. He gets, I, 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 I have to you ask know, the, the, you this. The Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, I know you don't like to throw dirt. I know that's not how you roll. But Luis Ortiz, it got to the point where he knew that the game was messed up and he had to actually leave Golden Boy Promotions because he felt like as a promoter, 
they were just not doing enough for him. They weren't pushing him. They weren't getting him fights. They weren't getting him dates. They weren't getting him visibility. So he actually had to leave, and he went and signed with Eddie Hearn in the U.K. Is that, an, is that kind of maybe what you're going through and an option that you need to start seeking is that maybe people are just not doing enough for you? Um, well, well, yeah, well, I, 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 can, I can only say, I mean, that, that, uh, that's rightfully speaking, that, that, that people are not doing enough for me. Now, the reason why, I don't know. Now, if I point out a reason, then that may be disrespect. But the yeah. clearest day, people are not doing enough for Brian Jennings. And mind you, I'm such a marketable individual. I've, I've, listen, I, I do a lot of things outside of boxing. And 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 one one of my one of my quotes was one of Jay Z's quotes, and you know it comes from the Reasonable Doubt album, and I was going to actually tweet it whenever I felt like it or whatever, you know, um, when he said, "Will you disappear, to son? Maintain it, putting myself in the position most of these boxers ain't in. I'm living. You get what I'm saying? So a lot of people, right. have, have, a lot of people has represented with certain things, but they don't fit the bill. They don't mm-hmm. fit the bill like I. And it's just like okay, even if we look at it at a Deontay Wilder. Wilder, you are the heavyweight champion of the world, WBC heavyweight champion of the world. You should be bigger than you are. You should be more mm-hmm. expressive, and your voice should be more powerful than it is. That's a fucking problem. It's a fucking problem. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I don't know what we're looking for. Are we looking for the next Muhammad Ali, or what? Or are we looking for somebody that's be, that's going to be quiet and let their handlers and let and and let and, and let and let sanctioning bodies and everything else speak for them? Like I'm not mm. letting nobody speak for me. And as tight and as, as tight as I am with with one of the most respected people in the world, or in, in the world or in the country, which is Jay Prince. He he, I mean, he allows me to express myself. It's just like okay, just because I have him, don't mean I should shut and he should talk. No, it's just like okay, B, do your thing. You know what I mean, do your thing, do what you gotta do, say what you gotta say. I'm gonna let B go on up there and do his thing. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like okay, there's nobody, there's nobody on my team or in my camp that should have more of a voice my, over my career than my than my. Yeah. Mhm. And I, I think that's what I see in a lot of these people. And it's just like damn, like. Where, where, where are these people at? Y'all on top? Y'all doing all that? Where the fuck is y'all at? Like, what is y'all giving back? What is, what is, what is, y'all, what, what is y'all input on the game? Like, I don't see any. Yeah, you are absolutely, you're absolutely right. We've seen so many times now in boxing where the fighters just give up control and throw up their hands on the, the, the direction of their careers. They just want their handlers to do it. There's no. Do you feel like the glory is gone from the sport? Yeah, I feel as I feel as though the glory is gone from life, period, oh. and entertainment. Music. Look at the music. The music. The, the, it has the same effect. But I think I think I think it, it 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 all goes back to, I think I think it all starts. I think it starts the, this new era of social media and things just being clouded and exposed and 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 just being misinterpreted. I don't I don't really I don't really respect. I don't really respect this new era because it's 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 it's, it's just not hands on. Like mm-hmm. you know, you just it's not genuine. You, you it's made up. It's made up. You can be whoever you want to be. Mm-hmm. Therefore, you got a lot of people. Right. It's like I, I don't get it. You could take you could who's the best rapper right now? Who's the best boxer right now? Who's pound for pound? Blah blah. blah. It all it all lies on votes and. Oh, this person said this, but who is this person? I'm gonna right. touch, touch on the situation, right? I'm gonna touch on the situation, yeah. and I posted it on I posted it on my Instagram yesterday. Now, the thing was when Jay Z and Kanye had received an award. It might have been an old an old clip, but Jay Z and Kanye oh, had yeah. received an award. You know, Kanye hugged Kim. Kanye hugged uh, Beyonce. Jay hugged Beyonce, but he did not acknowledge Kim, and did not hug Kim. So most people, oh, dang, he's ignorant for that, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, like, really? It's like, those, those are two different, those are two separate people. Yeah. Those are two, and, and, and if, if people to say, oh, Jay, if Jay and Kanye is supposed to be that tight, he's supposed to respect his woman. And it's just like, nah, like. Nah. Like, 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 no. And that's, that's, <laughs> people don't see the separation, the separation over time in the Jay-Z and Kanye relationship. Jay don't really Jay loves him. He 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 feels as though he's a genius, but I don't really think he respects his decisions and his and, and and his upbringing. But the world, leave it up to the world. Oh, it's 
power couple. It's it's this this mm-hmm. this that, and it's just, but it's just like y'all don't know shit. But everybody has their opinions, but nobody knows the reality of it, and nothing is original. Nothing is original. Everything mm-hmm. is just this new shit, and nobody has respect for nobody. And like Drake says, anyone to take shots. It's no, it's no, it's no ethic. <laughs> I, I I feel that this era has become very complacent. You know, if we look at Charles Martin, for example, he got mm. so many big opportunities this year. And, you know, he goes over there to fight Joshua. He stunk it up. He made a lot of money. Big check. He's not, big he's not check. doing, yeah, not doing much, smoking, drinking, drugs, this, rapping. I mean, he's doing all this stuff now. And it just boggles my mind who gets the opportunities in our sport now. You know, it, it's, it's just really fucked up, like you said. It's just yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, I I seen I seen the last two clips of of Charles. Now I I, I know for sure. You know, me, me me and Charles had a couple words over the net or whatever. Um, and we have I, I, we I've seen him personally. Um, but but you know, it, I I actually grew grew to grew to a liking to him personally because of his because of his knowledge of you know you know you know of of, of African culture and and and, mm. and pretty much being. And pretty pretty much being on that on that boat now his past his past uh his past two posts I just looked at it, I was like well dang now I don't know whether I don't know whether that that's the new him or whatever but I didn't I, I didn't I didn't view him to be that person I'm not judging I'm just saying mm-hmm. I didn't view him to be that person and to me personally for the respect and and, and things and, and the way I looked at him it's kind of it's kind of degrading towards my view. On 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 him being so, I I I thought I, I thought different of him, and you know maybe he's just going through some things. Maybe may, maybe it's a part of his life the way that he feel he feel a need to you know to feel a need to you know entertain some other things in order to feel yeah. good. Yeah. You know I mean? right. But but I I, I just I just didn't I, I didn't I just didn't see that in him before, and it's 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 kind of it's kind of it's yeah. it's kind of disappointing. His Snapchat maybe. is lit. Maybe he's just Literally. feeling a little bit lost. I mean, you know, you, we see this happen to so many boxers. You take a kid from the hood. This kid made $4 million in his last fight, and he's still living like he's living in a trap. Uh, you know, he's going through some. He looks like he's trying to go in the vegan direction. Maybe he just need. you know, maybe you guys will cross paths and you can give him some, some big brother kind of mentoring because I think you're a little bit older than him. Maybe he just need the right man to be like, look, dog. <laughs> embrace the positivity and and give the rap career alone, or maybe he's just more depressed or whatever than we than he's giving himself credit for for not only the loss but then getting shot in the arm after that. Right, 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 and right, and, and and it's 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 okay for somebody to go through certain changes, but you have you have to go through a change, you have to accept that change yourself, and then you put that change, you know, in on in the forefront. You know, you get what I'm saying. So it's just like we don't go through changes and then expect people to actually accept our change for us and make us make us accept our own change. It, it shit just don't go that way. Um right. I just think that I just think that okay, even if he's depressed, I just think he needs to I need I think he needs to, you know, express that personally and to himself, to his family and, and things like that. If evolve evolve of, of you know, evolve to who he is outside of social media and stuff like that 'cause when it 'cause when you start to do things and you put it on social media and it's it's all new to us you know, certain people that have like have like a strong mentality, we look at it as like, oh well, this is new. You know, oh, this, I, I didn't never know that. You know, I mean, at least warn you know warn us or something. But I, I just I just don't I just think it was blatant from from one point to the next. And like you said, he may he may be he may be in a state of depression. And that's well, serious. the one the, the one thing that I'll say about you that I see and that I know is that with everything that you have received from boxing. And outside of boxing, you have reinvested in yourself, in your family. You have projects going on. You have businesses. You have all this good stuff going for you. So <clears throat> sometimes I feel like um, guys, you know, that come from not much make a lot of money, and they just don't know what to do with it. But you actually seem right. to have your head on straight. Where did that come from where you were like, yo, I'm going to make this money, and I'm going to buy property. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Where did that come from? Did you have um, a, a I, mentor? I think I think I think it came from my experiences uh, previously 
um, you know, before boxing. And, and mind you, I came I came into the game at 24, so I'm I'm, I'm I've been I've been dead broke before, you know, and I had I had money before. So um, on top of that, and the mo- most importantly, it it, it uh you know def- definitely mentors and and not necessarily like hands on mentors, because the same people that mentor me, I mentor them. Let's not get that. Let's not get that twisted. Mm-hmm. You know, non-egotistical. You know, I'm not. I'm not speaking ego. But one hand will definitely wash the other. But and 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 when 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 you come across two individuals, um, the most important thing for me to be mentored was more important for me. And things that I find easy may have been more important for them. So 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 I definitely have the people that I'm surrounded by. And you know, Jay Prince is one of them. Um, and yeah, and you know it's just, it's just that mentoring without even mentoring. It's just you just lead by example. If you pay attention to if you pay attention to certain people, they're actually showing you how to do it. They're showing you how to do it. Nobody needs to sit you down and say, "Yo, this is how you do it." This way. they're showing you how to do it because they're leading by example. And Jay is one of the people that actually leads by example. If you, you know, the only only difference is you have to be around these people to actually know a lot more and to know different things. But the certain people that I'm around, you know, I'm actually I'm, 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 I see it. Oh, oh, okay, that's how that go. Blah blah blah. blah. That's how. That, and then if you want to get into it, okay, questions will easily be answered. They will be answered to the best to the best of their knowledge, and and that that may be the most the most informative answer that 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 you needed to receive, and that that'll give you the boost to go ahead and start and do whatever you need to do. So mentoring is one of the most important things that I've actually received from my surroundings and from people that I'm surrounded by. And but it all but more so it just it all had to do with me just paying attention, me just me just being observant, paying attention, looking at it, reading books. Figuring out how how was this started? How did this person start? Hey, I mean, I've had mentors. I have I've had people who whose life and experiences mentored me without me even they they made they made a die thirty years ago, but their story is mentoring. Their story is mm-hmm. mentoring. A mentor doesn't always actually have to be a physical person that actually comes to you or that's actually that you can actually call. It's it's, it's in history. It's it's, it's 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 there. If you want if you want knowledge, you have to go out and seek it. And there's plenty of different ways of seeking knowledge and finding knowledge. You have books, you have people, you have you have radio, you have you have social media. You have a lot of different avenues of of finding knowledge. And I think that I've taken advantage of a lot of them. And I still have some very I still have a lot of tightening up to do. But I'm on I'm on the right track for me, for my family, for my community, and. I, I, I just I just have to keep it going. That's it. Well, BY, it is always a pleasure. Always great to hear you drop some gems. We are so excited to see you back in the ring. We enjoy you in social media with your son Mace, mm-hmm. and always great. And it's just always great to talk to you. And we hope to see you back in the ring the sooner than the later. Yes, yes, and it's it's, it's good that we can have a a deep conversation without really mm-hmm. without it really even being about boxing. You know what I'm saying? That's right. But you know, well, you know, on the, on the other and end, life, they go hand in hand. They definitely go hand in hand. On the other end, you know, just in case we have any listeners that's that's wondering what's going on, well, you know, I'm still in shape, still vegan. You know, um, you know, I, I can never let myself go lazy, um, and I'm always ready for whatever. And I still knock out somebody every week in sparring. So. Uh, I think I think the world still better watch out. All right. We definitely All right. will. Have a great All right, day, y'all. Ryan. All right. Y'all do the same. Take care. All right. All right. All right, cool. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and when we get back, uh, maybe we'll get into some word on the curb. Let's see. When the mind is ready, the body prepares for war. So next time you engage in battle, protect your hands with the best. War Tape, the original branded tape. Order yours now at wartapebrand.com. And see why the enemy will fear you. Wartapebrand.com. We put hands on you. Put hands Woo. on you. Yes. That, that was a lot with BY. That was a lot. That was a lot of good stuff. Um, uh, absolutely. Jay, we, we didn't even prep for him this morning. We just said, Not you know what? BY is always good to talk to. Let's just talk to him like we're on a three-way phone call, like there's not, you know, thousands of people listening or anything. And that's exactly how it came off, and that is the friendship that we have with him, and we, we get our best stuff like that. And, that's um, right. And that was lit. I mean, it was lit. Uh, I, yeah. 
I don't That's even, a good dude there. We didn't even prepare for that, and he ended up on for, you know, like 25 minutes. So good stuff from Jennings. Um, I will reiterate what he said. The business is effed up. It really is. There's guys that get opportunities because of political reasons, and it's always been that way. Nothing is going to change. Uh, but, like, I did give him the example of Luis Ortiz feeling that he needed to make a change in his business. I feel that BY needs to start thinking about the same thing. I'm not throwing Gary Shaw under the bus, but I'm throwing Gary Shaw under the bus. So That's right. um, I do think it's time for him to make a move. You know, I don't think Gary can get things done for him anymore. Um, anyway, in case you missed it, Jay, um, yes. let's try to breathe right through these. We got some word on the curb. We want to play know it or blow it again. But in case you missed it, Adrian Broner and Robert Easter, they were going to share – a, uh, a fight card on December 17th. Not quite sure if that's going to happen anymore because Adrian Broner then started threatening to commit suicide all over the internet, all over his social media, putting up pictures of guns and countdowns and everything else. Well, anyway, he was sent to Vegas to get help by no other than his big bro, Floyd Mayweather. And this help big consisted bro. of going to strip clubs, driving to Gotti's till four in the morning, hitting up some more clubs. <laughs> He was then hit with a citation for choking out a waitress the other night. So right. great big help from Floyd. Great help. I think it's genius. Um, there's been pictures of them in the gym together, sparring together. Everyone knows Floyd does not really F with A.B. like that. Come on. Right. right. You thought he was going to go out there and really get help? Nah, man. I don't, I don't even understand this little soap opera they got going on. They don't rock with each other like that. I feel like A.B. just threw a tantrum and Floyd was like, fine, send him over here. I will watch right. him for a few hours. So I guess it was Floyd <laughs> shift to watch him this week. So thanks, Uncle Floyd. Uh, so the December 17th card is kind of in jeopardy. I don't think Broner's going to be ready unless they give him a duck, which I wouldn't be surprised if he fought a duck. Um, so we talked earlier about December 10th opening up since GGG and Jacob's camp couldn't reach an agreement. So notice I said the fight didn't fall apart. It was never made to begin with. They could not reach an agreement. With that being said, HBO is really looking to get Crawford on December 10th. It will most likely head to Nebraska in Lincoln, where Creighton University is. They are working on an opponent. Everybody knows that they want the belt. So they are going after the IBF champ from Russia, uh, Troy Vansky is his last name. We know that Felix Diaz wants to fight. Frank Espinoza, manager of Antonio Orozco, said, Orozco's ready for that challenge. Let's make it happen. But they really want the IBF champ. They really want that IBF belt. So the, an offer has been made. I think they're waiting to hear back from it. That's the word on the curb. Uh, so look out for that. If the IBF champ turns the fight down, then I expect Antonio Orozco to get the shot. All right. So uh, I think it's cool that they're going to Creighton. You know, that, that's the university. They got their, them to move their basketball game that they had scheduled that day. Lincoln, Omaha, they all love Terrence. You know, Everybody I told loves you before, Terrence. I, went, I told you before, I went to Omaha, and the crowd was like the United Nations. You had everybody and every type of person in the arena. You had farmers, you had hillbillies, you had gang members, you had millionaires, you had the hood, you had rich people. I mean, he brings everybody out to his shows. They all love him out there. So hopefully we can get to see him one more time. Um, a relationship that's really developing nicely, guys, is Heyman and Eddie Hearn. Heyman fighters are going to the UK and they are getting knocked out. I mean, this, this is all working Put. really, really great for these guys. The latest sacrificial lamb was BJ Flores. He went over <laughs> there and got stopped by Tony Bello. Mm -hmm. um, and then BJ's been putting out these press releases and crying about the loss. He's claiming there was low blows. He's issuing a protest. Look, if you saw the way in photos, first of all, he right. was butt naked. His junk was hanging out. He Ew. looked like death. No muscle whatsoever. He needs to cut it. Like, he needs to cut it out, Jay. It was. <laughs> he 
DJ Flores, man, he better get on his he, his boy is David Hay. He better get on that David Hay workout plan because David Hay keeps it right and tight. But DJ, I don't not so much. And then you got the nerve to complain. I need you coming to the to the rink in shape before you start all that complaining <laughs> about low blows. I guess that that kidney shot, I mean that that midsection shot that took him out was a low blow too. Uh, only hit punk. me here. You can only hit what? me here. And what a Get punk move to, to put a press release out crying right. about it. I mean, it's just, Sucker. oh, BJ. Uh, anyway, some better news is that Lucas Matisse is actually looking to make his ring return in the spring, maybe March, April time frame. Remember his last fight? It was against Victor Postel. Did a lot of oh, damage man. to that eye. Sure did. Did damage to that eye, did damage to that ego, and did damage to that soul. Postel. Mm. Man, Apostle took his soul with that fight. He was supposed to come back, didn't come back. He was supposed to come back around the time of the con. He was supposed to fight Herrera. He was supposed to fight on the Canelo con card. And we tried to take Oscar to task about that during the media round for the promotion of that fight. And he's like, oh, yeah, Matisse is anxious to fight. And I remember right before that press conference, I said to Oscar, well, we just saw a press release where he said he ain't fighting. And Oscar's like, well, uh, uh, you know, uh, he going to do what he want to do. So I'm not going to hold my breath on Lucas Matisse. You know, talking about Victor Postel, his manager also matter, manages the Russian Edward Troyvansky, the IBF mm-hmm. champ. So word on the curb is this manager may not really want that Crawford work. Postel already got that work from Crawford. So mm-hmm. not sure if he's willing to throw his young, hungry lion in there with Terrence. Um, nah. Moving on, Jarrett Hurd is now looking for a dance partner for November 12th in Philly. If there's any volunteers out there, hit us up. Call Heyman Boxing because they're having a really hard time finding a replacement. Coda got injured. Willie Nelson was then offered the fight, accepted the fight, and then rescinded yesterday. Um, so that sucks because Hurd Willie Nelson would have been a nice fight on Spike as well. So right. at this point, they're a few weeks out from the fight, literally two, three weeks out. At this point, it's like, who wants to fight? Anybody training? Anybody up for it? You know, it's not going to really be a formidable guy. It's not going to be a guy who's been in camp for six to eight weeks. So mm-hmm. I think they're looking for someone just to raise their hand at this point. There it is. Hopefully yeah. Somebody else up for it. Hopefully somebody who's seen a gym within the last six months. Yeah, so listen, before we wrap up, we only have a few minutes left in the show, and we're not really going to be able to do too much during Hot Topics, but I do want to talk a little bit about Golovkin and Jacobs. So this fight was under negotiation. It was going to go to purse bid. You know, we all know Danny Jacobs wanted more of the cut, and the the WBA stuck to their rules and said, no, it's 75-25. We all knew that December 10th was the targeted date for this fight. Everybody knew this back in September. So as B.Y. Jennings was talking earlier, stay ready, stay in the gym, stay training. Well, the latest story this past week, Danny Jacobs' trainers comes out and says, look, we don't have enough time to train for this fight. We only got 12, 13 weeks until December 10th. This fight is not going to happen. Now, come on, Jay, if you all knew back in September – that December 10th was the targeted date. Why do you need three months to train? And why right. is 13 weeks not enough for you right now? Why is that you not fat enough? As hell. Because you fat as hell. You've been sitting on the couch eating wings and pizza when you're supposed to be in the gym. Come on now. About three well, months. Look, Get the hell out of here. Obviously, they haven't stayed in the gym. He's not ready. I'm not sure why you need a 12 to 13 week camp. Most fighters back in the day, who fought 15-round fights every couple months were only training six to eight weeks, not much more than that. You know, that is a healthy camp. We are now in the era where these guys want three months, 12 to 13 weeks to train for a fight. So here's the the bummer, the biggest bummer out of all this, is that now Golovkin lost the date, and he doesn't get his third fight in this year. That sucks. I'm sure Tom Lawson is not happy about that. Do you think that Golovkin, when he hears stuff like, do you think he cusses? Because, you know, he's got that whole, that personality <laughs> that, oh, you know, I, I'm not here for games. Do you think he, you know, we always learn the cuss words in different languages first. Do you think he's that out with Abel? Ah, 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 ah. 
I don't know. Maybe that's just my crazy mind. I just want to know. I'm sure Abel's like that. He's in the Hell press yeah. every single day wreaking every day. havoc and everything else. And But anyway, <laughs> it's just unfortunate. Apparently, supposedly, word on the curb is that they are still talking. They start. They are still in negotiations. Tom Loeffler wants this to happen in early 2017. To be honest with you, I see Danny Jacobs coming back and fighting like a Dominic Wade. Like, I see something like that happening. I'm not trying to burst everybody's bubble, but I said this before about this fight not happening in December, and I was called a hater and, and this and that. And, guys, I mean, there's a pattern here. You know, just connect the dots. It's, it's pretty easy. So yep. I, I just see him fighting like a, like a Dominic Wade next. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, hey, that, there it is. <laughs> That's yeah. all I got. So, That's all I got. <laughs> so a couple weeks ago, it was announced that Danny Garcia was fighting Samuel Vargas, who was trained by Billy Briscoe, a Philly trainer. At the press mm-hmm. conference, they spun the whole fight in that this was going to be sort of like a Philly versus Philly type of fight. Well, Billy Briscoe and his fighter Vargas are training in Miami. They're not even training in Philly. Um, I was in Philly a couple weeks ago. I asked a lot of people in the crowd what they thought about the fight, and I'll tell you, a lot of people are disappointed in Philly. They love Danny. They really do, but they are really disappointed in the matchup. They do feel like it's a cherry pick. They want him to be great because they know he is that good. Um, So I'm not quite sure how this fight is going to sell at Temple. I think he will get a nice little crowd. I think they're going to give away a ton of comp tickets. What I was hearing in the crowd was they're not buying tickets to go to that. They're just not going to do it. Um, And that night, there's a big UFC fight in New York where the guy Alvarez, the Puerto Rican guy from Philly, he's fighting McGregor. That's a really big deal. They love that guy in Philly. So it's going to be a matter of do we stay home and watch our Philly boy on pay-per-view? A lot of these guys have tickets to go to New York, or do they go to Temple and watch Danny beat Vargas the F up? So that's that's where Philly stands. What's up with that? You know, I looked at your car. Congratulations to you and, and Russell Peltz and Bam Rogers for your card you just did in Philly. And I saw a lot of BY, like you said, was there buying tickets and other Philly guys mm-hmm. were out there. What's up with that? What's, what's <laughs> up with Danny Garcia? He had a press conference Man. the same week of you guys' fight. He could have been out there shaking hands and kissing babies. Yeah. Angel could have been dancing people down to the ring. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe they just feel they're above that now. All right. I don't know. I was really disappointed, and I usually go really hard for Danny Garcia. Everybody knows that. But it's been really hard to go hard for him lately. And like you said, Jay, at that fight last week, all the Philly fighters came out. They paid for their tickets. You know, we had Gabe Rosado, Julian Williams, by Jenny. I mean, they were all in the building, except Danny Garcia. And I thought, wow, you have a fight coming up here in a few weeks. Why aren't you out here with the fans, with your people? Why aren't you supporting the local club shows? It would mean so much to those fighters. They would buy a fight and go to your fight just because you were there to see them right. fight. Um, so it's just disappointing. I just, I don't get it. But I guess he doesn't have to do it. And I want to know why they didn't tell him to go. Why didn't his people say, hey, you should be getting some publicity at that fight Friday night. That's right. Oh, wow. So, anyway, yeah, so... Um, Jay, I got one piece of word on the curb. I've been sprinkling a little bit of word on the curb here throughout the show, but here is some real word on the curb. We all know that um, Toledo, or Lito Toledo, he's out with back problems. So be on the lookout, ready for this, for Vargas, Francisco Vargas, versus Mura in early 2017. Mura has now become the number one mandatory. HBO really wants that fight. Of course, Golden Boy wants that fight. You know who wants that fight? Who wants that rematch? Everyone. Uh, oh, yes. E- yes. Yeah, you got it. Everyone we wants do. that. So I I don't see Salido, Miura happening, or it's not being rescheduled. The fight that HBO wants and everybody wants is that vargas Miura rematch. So be on the lookout for that. You heard it here with RB and Jay first. Jay, wrap us up. With the, with the fight schedule this weekend. There's not much going on, but there's a couple little fights going on. Yes, let's look at the weekend fight schedule. On Friday, October 28th on Unamas, we have Aldemar Silva Santos versus Eric De Leon. 
and also on that's on Friday the 28th, and on Saturday, October 29th, on DirecTV Pay Per View, Juan Manuel Lopez versus Wilfredo Vasquez Jr. Juan Ma, man, I thought Juan Ma was retired, man. Are the belts still on eBay? Can we still buy the belts Girl, on eBay? It's on Pay Per View. <sighs> Oh, God. Mm. I just fear for his health more than anything. You know, nothing but love for all fighters who got there and put it up. I mean, but I just fear for one yeah. of my health, and let's just hope they get out of it safely. So that is your weekend fight schedule from RB and J. Yep. Well, thankfully, October is almost over, and we can Thank roll God. right into November where we got some big fights coming up, and we'll be out there for Kovalev Ward in Las Vegas. Woo, so, woo. Thank God October is over. Thank you. Rest in peace. Uh, thank you, Al thank Heyman. You to, yeah, thank you, B.Y. Jennings, for calling in during the hotline bling. That was great today. Um, tune in to The Ruckus this Wednesday, 8 o'clock. Is it at culture.net, RagingBabe.com. We appreciate you for listening. Today we only ran over like five minutes. That's cool. That's thank you good. for being so awesome. All right. Take care. And we out. All right. <laughs>